Uh, hello everyone. Thank you for being here. I'm Saurabh Kumar, uh, editor of Special Projects Entrepreneur India. Uh, let me first uh, introduce again our very special guest for this session uh, before we start the discussion. Uh, we'll take questions from audience post the discussion. Uh, I request the audience to put their questions through the uh, discuss tab. Uh, we'll take them post the uh, uh, discussion. So, uh, introducing uh, to start the introduction, it is a pleasure to have with us today, Mr. Sham Srinivasan, the MD and CEO of Federal Bank, a position he has held since uh, 2010. Uh, he has immense experience of leading multinational banks in India, Middle East, and Southeast Asia, and he's an institution in uh, you know retail banking, wealth management, and SME banking. Uh, under his leadership, the presence and visibility of Federal Bank reached uh, nationwide, and and he has been instrumental in reinventing and re-implementing processes across verticals. Uh, welcome, Mr. Uh, Srinivasan. Uh, it is also my pleasure to have with us Mr. Sanjay Nath. Uh, co-founder and managing partner at Bloom Ventures, uh, one of India's prominent early stage venture funds. Uh, in its eight-year history, Bloom made some stellar exits, uh, uh, which include Metal, Minzer, Runner, Taxi for Sure, Promptech, and uh, Zipdial. Its current portfolio includes, uh, includes uh, Grey Orange Robotics, and Academy, Railia 3, and Skillapps, among many others. Uh, Mr. Nath's experience spans uh, the US, India, and ranges from management uh, consult, uh, consulting to product marketing and operations and much more. So welcome, Mr. Nath. Thank uh, you. To, uh, to start with, uh, I'll start with Mr. Uh, Srinivasan, sir. Uh, so it, it is really a difficult time for the entire economy. Everyone is under stress. Uh, the government, banks, businesses, uh, the SMEs. So in your career, you would have seen so many ups and downs. So, you know, what would be your message for entrepreneurs right now, the especially the the smaller businesses who are finding it really difficult to uh, put on a brave, a brave show. Uh, thanks, Saurabh, and uh, hello to everybody. Uh, like Saurabh mentioned, it is indeed uh, an extremely, uh, enormously challenging time for everybody, and uh, there is no textbook or template on how to deal with this. And I, many of us are figuring out the best possible, given the circumstances, to sort of weather the storm. Now, but in particular to your question, how do uh, businesses, in particular the smaller businesses, uh, manage to navigate through this? Uh, uh, the way we've seen this uh, is first, the most crucial one is to ensure somehow cash flows are there to keep the basics of the business going. Now, there are a few opportunities that are there. Uh, certainly, if you're a borrower of a bank and you've uh, maintained a reasonably decent credit history, then there is a government guarantee program that is there, which gives you about credit line uh, without additional guarantee and additional security. So there is some kind of liquidity that is coming in. The second, many of uh, many of our clients have tried is to try and find other unencumbered security security and place that and try and get some line. Third is people are trying to use the gold that is there in the possession to try and get some credit lines. Uh, because there is, uh, this, this is quite a unprecedented, right? The banks are themselves facing challenges of trying to uh, keep their ship going. So it's got to be collaborative. It's got to be an effort of getting uh, the best possible lines of credit organized uh, within these uh, sort of boundaries of uh, some kind of security that you may already have or you have uh, you have not used up uh, existing lines. But the other part of the business is what we tell ourselves, tell our clients is how do you just stick to the basics and get cash flows going. Now, in an era of many lockdowns, many uncertainties, people are struggling to get their flows going. Now, there are some sacrifices, some compromises that have to be made. And I'm sure each business is trying to find the best ways of doing it. But to my mind, the local community businesses are suffering a little less than grand scale businesses because in every local catchment, there is some business going in, and there are business, you know, small businesses that are able to cater to local demand and try to get that flowing. But A, uh, there is no easy answer. B, we have to rely on the existing government guarantee schemes, additional security on hand, uh, try and bring in uh, other security that you have not used up, lines that you have not drawn up, and above all, um, bring out some of your gold uh, if that is available. If you see the last four or five months, gold loan companies and gold growth has been quite spectacular. Uh, so the...
Yeah, I think we just uh, lost Mr. Shyam, so we'll wait for him to come back. Uh, 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 Mr. Uh, uh, Mr. Srinivasan, uh, uh, we lost Mr. Srinivasan. So, Ms. Nath, I'll come to you. Uh, you know, we have seen during this period, uh, we're we getting mixed, uh, you know, messages from the uh, from the startup community, basically. You know, so, uh, some businesses are pivoting to remain alive and some are thriving. Uh, in terms of funding too, you know, there are some spaces. Uh, back. Oh, yeah, please. Yeah, yeah, please go ahead, sir. Please. My apologies. For about 10 seconds, I dropped off. I don't know no, no. the point. Yeah, uh, please go ahead. But I guess that was heard. Yeah, yeah, please. So uh, uh, you were talking about gold loans that they have done uh, really well. So, yeah, you can, you can continue. No, no, I was only suggesting that yeah. so while there are no uh, clear cut, do this, do that, we have to figure out all the available options and in a time like this where gold prices are on the ascent, uh, people are... Seems some, uh, must be some connection problem, I think. Yeah, yeah, well, maybe some. So, uh, so uh, uh, Vishnath, we'll, we'll just continue with what I was uh, asking you is that, you know, uh, so, so, so how have you seen what it has been uh, easier? No, go ahead, Sanjay. I think the line is... Third time, third time lucky. Let's try. <laughs> Let's try. Yeah, maybe. Go ahead. Please go ahead. We'll, I'll come back. You okay, go okay, okay. We're buying, we're buying some gold in the interim. <laughs> <laughs> Buy it from us. So, uh, so, Mr. Nath, as I was saying that, you know, we're getting these mixed, uh, uh, you know, messages from uh, the industry, from the startup ecosystem. Some are striving, some are just trying to survive, just everything. Uh, in terms of funding also, some sectors we've even seen during the lockdown that we saw they got money and they were, but there are some which are, so what has been your, uh, uh, you know, observation and what would you want to tell? We have a lot of entrepreneurs here in our audience. So, you know, they are looking, they are looking for ways to, uh, you know, survive this period. So what would be your message to them? Sure. You know, uh, we, we hear, hearing this word uh, headwinds and tailwinds a lot, right? Uh, you know, I think as founders, that there are market forces, but there, there's also your internal business. And uh, uh, you know, my message to the entrepreneurs would be that uh, you know, think about think about what your end customers are doing, right? Uh, uh, because if your end customers are going through, let's say, positive or negatives, and you're developing solutions to mirror that, uh, you get you get a clue, right, of where you should focus. So I think uh, the first is to you know to See, this is this. Uh, the, the pandemic is going to be there for a while, right? In the sense, even if it goes away, there's going to be a lag. Like, for example, if there was a lag in the next quarter, you're only going to see the effects of revenue and profits in the next quarter, right? We're, we're seeing a lag effect. Uh, essentially, we will have like lost a year, right? Because we look at the six months plus six months lag. So, the message to founders uh, and entrepreneurs is one is that to make sure that you have enough. I think one is to have enough cash to ride out the storm, if you will. Um, uh, uh, you know, extend your runway. Uh, if you needed six months in normal times today, you need 12 months of cash. Uh, you know, in our in our uh, parlance, if you will. Uh, the second uh, the the second point is you know reduce your customer churn and really focus on keeping your existing customers because I think getting new customers is becoming a little difficult. So it's really important to deliver value to deliver value to existing customers and. Uh, on the other hand, there are also silver linings, right? Because you heard this famous line that never let a crisis go to waste. And uh, it's at times like these that great companies also get formed. Uh, Uber was formed after the 2008 financial crisis. Um, uh, JD.com was fo uh, founded after the SARS crisis, you know, in the early 2000s. So the fact is that, you know, consumer and enterprise behavior is going to change. And you've got to look for those changes. In fact, I think if you have money, this is a great time to do a, to start a company because you can start with a clean slate. So I would say, you know, again, I think uh, extend cash, that's conserve cash, cut all your non-essentials, focus only on essentials, and then look for those shifts, right, in, uh, in tailwind sectors and in your enterprise and customer behavior that you can go uh, and de design solutions on. So we're actually quite bullish. It's a very tough time. There's a lot of pain, but uh, it's almost like a reset, right? So the new world order is going to be very different. Hmm. So there's a, there's one question, and uh, you know I'll take from there, I borrow from there, and ask you that you know uh, he's talking about how do we how do I grow my e-commerce business right now? I know that this is a perfect time for maybe e-commerce businesses to uh, you know uh, start, but uh, what would your advice be if someone is trying for for an e-commerce business? And apart from that, what are the sectors right now which really presents good opportunity? 
because uh, for uh, you know if you said you can start with a clean set so maybe someone had an idea but was not able to start it so it, it, what are the those areas which if you have an idea you can just start off right now so, and uh, it could be a good time to start maybe sure you know by the way we'll say uh, you know i say that uh, you know as investors we don't predict trends i think the good entrepreneurs are the ones that find something interesting and then come to us but having having made that macro statement i think we're seeing some sectors which have really taken off right if you look at edtech for example or uh, uh, you know we have our own academy that you talked about the fact is that we're all sitting in our living rooms uh, uh, you know on different conference and tool, tools means that learning is changed and it's going to be virtual for a long time right that's one i think in e-commerce also there's a big shift from offline to online so edtech edtech healthcare uh, as sectors you know are going to be very interesting of course of course fintech in terms of uh, 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 in terms of a, in terms of a question on e-commerce see delivery is going to be very interesting for us because with social distancing norms i think retail is going to take some time to come back right malls and things like that they'll they'll uh, they'll open but they'll be for, with safety precautions so the delivery side right uh, focused on the versus the front side which is around logistics around last mile around uh uh different aspects of delivery right you know whether it's uh, within cities intercity uh, mapping ai uh, is really going to be a very interesting area right uh, we have our own focus that does route optimization uh, and then we're seeing that the uh, the online components of i mean the uh, the uh, large brands are shifting from online to offline so if you are an e-commerce partner and you can become their digital partner right if you can go to smes and say listen i can take you online and become your online digital partner there's so many opportunities there uh on the other hand you also have to look at an area where amazon and flipkart are not in right because whatever if you're competing with them whatever you can do they can do faster better cheaper uh having said that i think uh sectors like edtech are going to see like a permanent shift right people are really questioning how whether you know how learning is going to get done i think online is always going to be their virtual learning if you look at healthcare look at telemedicine uh consulting doctors online even uh you know taking appointments for surgeries healthcare is going to go through a whole transformation and then uh, you know we also india is such a large market thanks to now uh, geo and the large investors coming in like face facebook and google but you also have built in what we call built in india for global markets right built in back for global markets which is really b2b automation is going to take off so whether it is uh, uh you know uh, testing or other end uh, saas uh, saas because the whole enterprise behavior is moved to the cloud So you'll see a lot of SaaS startups coming out also. Vertical SaaS focus on verticals, but also horizontal. So, you know, quite a wide uh, spectrum. Uh, yeah. But uh, and I would say we are quite, you know, in a fortunate position because we're already all 100% digital. And uh, in that sense, I think we are, uh, you know, at the recipient of some very interesting silver lining opportunities. Mm-hmm. Okay, great, thank you. So, uh, Mr. Srinivasan, I'll come to you, sir. So, during this period or when this happened, so have you also noticed the change in terms of the businesses who are coming to you to look for, uh, uh, you know, for money for to 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 boost their business or start their business? Have you also sh- seen a shift in kind of business like businesses which are more tech focused, maybe coming to you? Is there any trend which you can share with us? I think what the point, some of the points which Sanjay mentioned uh, are actually very interesting and uh, most likely the new order. Uh, but normally businesses like this at the startup stage don't go to banks for funding. So the right. Now I'm talking about smaller businesses, maybe if it's that kind of thing. Businesses that come to us, uh, where uh, rather the other way to say it is where banks are more encouraged to lend, are businesses that are in this space that are more consumer facing. and this non discretionary which means that, you know things that they have to buy and consume hmm. uh, be it food be it technology be it the education space healthcare so certainly there is a, a better connect on that space and we are seeing some pick up but i would i would say that it's early because if you're a startup uh, in that area you're not going to the bank if you're an existing business which is branching out then there's a likelihood you're coming to your bank So if a if an offline education space suddenly chooses to go to online, then there's a good chance that he will go to his bank and have a conversation. Uh, if it's a small business catering to a local community, but now needs a logistic support and has to put a mechanism, likelihood of going to the bank. But uh, abolition, not much. 
from a point of view of people with a good idea coming to bank. Uh, and that's usually not the forte of the bank. Banks engage with clients who have an established business and then grow that. To that extent, therefore, there is a challenge. But having said that, the willingness to do more in this space is certainly higher for banks right now, as long as the people who are backing it come with some kind of, uh, you know, sort of a fairly credible uh, background and have some kind of backing. Then certainly banks will be. But I can't yet say it's a large number. I can see some sprinklings of it across here and there, particularly mm. in banks for Mumbai and Chennai. Mm. Okay. Okay. Thank you, sir. Sir, uh, uh, to you know, to uh, you know, to uh, we have a little time left before we wrap. So I would really want to know about uh, from you about uh, the macro scenario that we are all uh, facing. So, what should be our uh, next steps? Uh, you know, the the the, the in terms of the, the entire economy, the government, banks, and everything. What should be the next steps that we should expect, and we should uh, you know ideally do to bring the demand back right now the demand has gone down and that has been the biggest challenge that is the biggest challenge of any economy and that would be key when we go forward so what in your opinion are the right steps that would be required uh, to do so we have to break this into three parts one is uh, like you pointed out stimulating demand uh, but if you peel back the stimulation of demand is also a function of ability confidence of people and uh, the belief that the next six months, nine months, 12 months, life will come back to some kind of uh, rhythm and order because everybody is now benchmarking to how December, January or December 2019 or January 20 was, when will we get back to that? And there's a certain degree of denting of confidence that has happened in healthcare, healthcare and stuff like that. So uh, if you have to bring back demand, one is that has to be inspired and that's not easy till we get some kind of good news on the uh, on the vaccines and the remit, you know, for the medicines that are available to cure in the unfortunate event of somebody contracting the virus. But the other part, which is the stimulation of demand, uh, some efforts have been done by the government by giving credit lines and trying to make the liquidity in this country uh, way higher than ever before. But I do think still people get uh, uh, the comfort that their next three paychecks or next six paychecks are in place. It's not going to be easy for people to, you know, open up their purses. To that extent, uh, that part of the demand will be limited. Uh, the, the whole middle India, lower than middle India, is not going to sort of crush the buying stuff and consuming. So to stimulate that, some measures are required. In fact, later this evening, there's a uh, bankers meet with the prime minister where everybody is uh, giving the uh, two bits to tell him what he needs to be doing. But that's uh, you know that's a wild card right? you don't know which way to go but uh, the government also has certain limitations of how much they can uh, sort of uh, uh, you know spray money around so to go back one confidence and uh, uh, sort of a belief that the next six nine months life will open up that's a, that's a you know tall ask uh, giving some kind of uh, liquidity support at a scale it is there but at an individual level uh, how does that come back? And I think there are some efforts, but I would argue that it's a little tough. And the third is those who have taken loans and so those who have some kind of borrowings have got a temporary relief of a moratorium or an ability to spread their payment over time. Now, the real challenge would be, you know, come August or September when people have to make those payments uh, will they be able to do that comfortably or will the will they will, will their cash flow enable them to pay now if that were to happen uh, i would believe that we would be in a better place than today there's a lot of ambiguity uh, people don't know whether the banks are nervous they don't know whether they're going to get the payments coming in so they're stopping the lending if if that cycle gets more constructive and people are beginning to pay come september october I think there will be some pickup and it coincides with the festival season. So I'm yeah. a little more hopeful that by September, October, we, I think it will be a lot less gloomier. But, you know, this is hard to tell. Uh, we keep telling ourselves, just stay the course, head down, do the Dravid act. Just, just, yeah. just play the course. Yeah. Right. Yes, we all need to be Dravids right now. Yeah. So yeah. Just, you know, just, just keep playing. Yeah, just surviving. Yeah. 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 So, Saru, do you have time for a comment? Do we have a minute? 
Yeah, yeah, please go ahead, please. You know, uh, Mr. Srinivasan uh, talked about an interesting uh, sort of dichot. I mean, distinction between you know startups and uh, some of the consumer brands that come to them. I think what is interesting is in the last decade or five years, like let's say the last five years, you've seen an interesting meshing of these together. I know Jugal Bandi, right? So today you'd like you'd you'd have to ask. I mean, Geo Reliance has become a digital company today. Just think about it, right? It's probably one of the uh, most valued digital or tech startups in the world, if you will. Um, consumer brands today, right? All of them, uh, and thanks to the lockdown, they're being sold digitally even more. Everybody has a digital strategy, all large corporations. So today you really question who is not who's a tech company, but who's not a tech company. And where that's playing out is that we are seeing that, you know, uh, some of our startups go to banks for venture debt, for example, or you're seeing consumer brand focus uh, VCs and P private equity funds and uh, digital VCs like us are investing together, co-investing, right? Which is great for the ecosystem because they're getting a complete perspective, you know, in both ways. I think tech companies need, it's very interesting. I'm looking at uh, Mr. Srinivas said tech companies need sort of the guidance of a, you know, offline seasoned banker like Mr. Srinivas and vice versa. Uh, you know, many of them also need, you know, fantastic tech coders, to develop the technology, the digital strategies. So it's a very interesting coming together. The second part I'll just quickly add is that I think today we're finding that for entrepreneurs, all, of course, they want to create value and make money, but they really care about what they're doing much more than about 20 years ago, right? So if you look at, we've got uh, Yulu Bike, Amit and his co-founders at Yulu Bike right. or uh, other founders who really care about the environment, right? I mean, in the sense that, you know, you can do good and yet you can create value. Uh, uh, you know, carbon capture, we've got carbon uh, carbon clean solutions. And I think that's quite a change from 10, 20 years ago where they want to, I think, sustainability and, uh, you know, uh, 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 you know, points, uh, words like that have entered the vocabulary. And that's that's interesting to note also. Yeah, I'm sure sustainability is something that we'll have to look for. Like even in, I was reading a report today that, you know, the, the pollution levels that had come down so much might again spike up if we don't act responsibly even now. So that's very important that we have to do. And uh, of course, to Mr. Srinivasan's point that, uh, uh, you know, uh, you have a meeting with the Prime Minister today to give you a bit, I hope.